Hello there. I am Shadow Dom Empire. My nickname is Japper. And today we'll be looking at nuclear energy. Why it should be implemented. Why, uh, how it affects the climate. And the general view on nuclear energy and power itself. I think we all know what uh, energy is. Energy is simple. Um, a broad term to describe all sorts of stuff from moving objects or uh, moving things or people um, heating our homes or putting things big or small together. Simple. Well, you see, the energy consumption, 84% of the world's energy still comes from fossil fuels, however, which is pretty bad because fossil fuels, they create uh after they combust they um create these toxic gases these pollutants that uh, pollutes the environment and leads to climate change to global warming that's pretty bad now we have um at the fossil fuels um consist of oil co uh, oil coal and natural gases Oil takes 33% of the um, global energy consumption, coal 27, natural gas 24, but only 16% of global energy comes from low emission sources. Well, 70% of the global energy consumption comes from hydroelectric, 5% come from other low emissions, um, e.g wind energy, solar energy, and um, tidal energy. And only 4%, a tiny fraction of it, comes from nuclear energy. Now, let's look at these CO2 uh, emission statistics. Instead of decreasing in 2019, the world was emitting 50% more carbon dioxide than in the year 2000. And scientists say that these numbers will keep rising year by year. It is complicated when, um, when it comes to stopping, it's, uh, when it comes to stop using fossil fuels without being kicked to the Stone Age. Because if we stop using um, fossil fuels entirely, just suddenly, we wouldn't be having electricity by now. We wouldn't be having cars. Uh, things wouldn't run. Yeah. So we have to slowly, uh, slowly but surely, fix this problem. What can we do then? One of the most impactful thing we can do is electrify as many sectors as we can. Um, like electrifying cars, for example. You see, we all know that cars, boats, and trains rely on fossil fuels, but we need to electrify them because electricity does not uh, produce pollutants when it has been used. What is electricity? It is obvious. It's, it's, the, it's the thing that when, when you plug something into a socket, energy, uh, energy flows through the wires, right? And... Uh, it just magically makes light. You spark something in, and it magically makes light. But in more technical terms, energy is a is the presence and flow of electric charge. When electricity, uh, using electricity, we can transfer energy in ways that allow us to do simple chores like turning on the lights, um, turning off the lights, and cooking. Now, why do we need to rely on electricity so much? You see, we can produce um, electricity with low emission technologies like solar, wind, or nuclear directly. You see, with fossil fuels, right? It does not create um, electricity, electricity like uh, directly. When we put oil into the car, the oil turns its um, chemical its chemical energy and transform it into movement energy for the cars to go brrr. Now, that's nothing with electricity. With low emissions, um, 
you have these turbines that spins because of the wind and because of water and also the steam from nuclear reactors, right? It spins a turbine and directly creates electricity with little emissions, CO2 emissions. Electricity is a real lever for a radical transition. Yes, it is. Why is it so hot then? If I'm saying that that's all we need to do, why is it so hard? Well, most places in the world, uh, the, elec uh, the world electricity is still generated um, by burning fossil fuels. So electricity we're using right now comes from a power station. And how those power stations work, most of them, is that they burn these, um, these fossil fuels to heat up the water and to create steam. And which the steam travels along these tubes to spin the turbine. Pretty simple. But they have to get rid of the um, carbon emission, the, the waste. So they just dump it in the, into the air. Now, why is it so hard again? Sorry, I read it again. We are installing renewable at record speeds, yes. But uh, at the same time, the amount of fossil fuels we're burning for electricity still keeps rising year by year. And renewables so far have not been able to catch up with the um, electricity demands. Oh yes, here you go. This is the graph I forgot to mention right here. As we can see, um, the, uh, the electricity usage increased 73%. We, we think that it will keep, keep increasing. What should we do then? Again, the last what should we do question before we get on to another topic. We're trying to replace energy with electricity, however. If we're going to electrify sectors um, that currently use fossil fuels like cars, boats, and trains and stuff, we will need sig uh, significantly more electricity than, um, than everywhere around the world because, well, we have to tran tran transfer fossil fuels into electricity and yada, yada, yada. And also, one of the, one of the solution is called implementing nuclear energy. You see, even though it's not renewable, um, its greenhouse gas emissions are tiny compared to uh, burning stuff. But in the last 20 years, the production of nuclear energy have stagnated. It just stopped. Now, okay, you see, um, nuclear energy, um, when, when these fuel elements, uh, typically radioactive elements, right, they, they are used, they produce um, radioactive waste, which or plutonium, um, plutonium is one of them, and many other, which it's very hard to get rid of. And we will get to radioactive waste later. Now, if we implement um, nuclear energy, how, how can we know that it will work? We, we do know uh, it will work because it has been done on a large scale before. Take a look at France and Sweden, for example. 10% of France's um, energy comes from fossil fuels, 67 from nuclear, um, 23, uh, sorry, 23% from hydro and also renewables. And in Sweden, 30% comes from nuclear, 45 from hydro, um, 23 from renewables. Oh, um, mainly um, renewable energy, mainly in renewable energy, right? Hydroelectric is most, um, most, what, what, what's the word? Um, hydroelectric is the most dominant. Yes, as we can see here, hydroelectric is the most dominant form of renewable energy. Now, hydroelectric, um, one fact I want you to know is that the reason it's so dominant is, is you see, these are uh, hydroelectric has these gigantic dams 
uh, which water flows from a higher altitude into lower altitude, spinning the turbine and and producing energy to the uh, to the towns or cities or whatever. And it's pretty effective. But you see, hydroelectric, although is very, very dominant and effective, kills uh, are the most dangerous out of all the renewable energy. Because you see, whenever a, a dam breaks, like um, the incident in Beijing, so basically this dam um, was, it was doing a, a storm a, a, or a flood and a washer builds up and the pressure was too much for the dam to hold. So the dam breaks and water rushed out and, well, destroying the dam, the, the dam and the village in the process. 230,000 people got killed in the process, much less than Chernobyl, um, Fukushima, and, well, nuclear power in general. Not nu nu nuclear bomb, no. Now, the downsides of nuclear. In fact, every single energy source have their downsides. None is perfect. The downsides of nuclear, however, is that it, it has been um, more than half of the nuclear reactors in the world were built between 1970 and 1985. Therefore, most nuclear um, power plants are quite old technology, and um, the production of nuclear in innovations have been stopped completely because of the um, governments uh, trying to appease the public. Because, because well, people have a bad blood with nuclear. They have, you know, they have a stigma towards nuclear. I'll get to that later. It is very expensive and very, um, very hard to build, um, and it takes a lot of space. But the most concern is that um, it produces radioactive waste, which these radioactive waste cannot be stored elsewhere, um, only underground. All we can do is store radioactive waste underground and hope for the day it. Um, it's it starts to decompose and lose its radioactiveness, which is not a long term, um, long term solution. But we are still trying to come up with technologies which are trying to turn these these uh, these waste into energy and other useful materials. Most most waste, uh, most nuclear um, reactions, no, most nuclear fuels, elements uh, which are used up in nuclear reactors produce um, nuclear waste, which often are plutonium, and plutonium are made to make bombs, atomic bombs. This might surprise you, but the amount of deaths. Um, that nuclear energy kills per year is quite low compared to the others. You see, um, during this 50 years, coal has killed 1,230 people, while uh, um, nuclear energy only kills one person every 14 year. And you see, people are yelling to each other whether nuclear is safe or not, or or uh, whether or not we should give up nuclear, while well, the silent killer kills coal, these fossil fuels. Now, let's get to the fun part. How does a nuclear reactor work? You see, nuclear, nuclear reactors reactor. have three In components, this video, we're learn uh, about three the sectors. Reactor. We have the nuclear reactor core, are the or the fuel tank, and we have the steam, power and the turbine. As the traditional um, fossil fuels, 99 like coal, of the things, the um, 99 of the shenan 99 percent of the shenanigans goes on in the fuel these tank rods because vary in number according the fuel to the tank size contains the these um, fuel elements, which are typically made up of these. 
um, uranium, uranium-235 or uranium-238. These, fuel elements, these, are normally um, these elements water, which acts as a moderator. Are, oh yeah. The objective of a so, moderator is to slow these down uranium the new are physical elements. Let, 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 let me NAD. find what he says that. New neutron with uranium right. so, These uraniums are the size of the reactor are physical in elements meaning they would they like to break apart and contain fissionable and nuclei like uranium yeah, 235 they like, they like to break apart and when a neutron these rods vary is in number shot at these the size of the particles in it breaks off creating more neutrons of fuel and breaking off other particles which in turn this region where the, um, these fuel create more energy placed is called the and it creates a, um, a chemical reaction these fuel elements are normally neutron bombarding acts as a moderator each uranium particles the objective of a moderator this is process smoke. creates a huge amount of energy but most of the time the neutrons are too fast um so uh, are, are too fast they travel too fast and they couldn't hit the um the uranium particles so the solution is to put purified water in it as a moderator so the neutrons don't go that crazy and also they enrich the um, down the uranium and particles reactor, inside there, which are produced during so the that nuclear fission process it's easier for the, the neutron elements. to hit them. The and we go to the control rods. Control rods 35. are basically these rods during that when you put inside process, the new fuel tank, out, right? Which have energies it basically just uh, makes this is the one particles of these volts. radioactive materials stuck to it so it would stop in the process, process as and when it would like it to, con uh, to continue you just fact, the block it out and the process just continues is 500 now less you see that. this process creates a huge amount of amount of energy these can these reaction creates a huge amount of energy um making the water hot now this hot water travels to the steam generator, the, the steam, cre creates a steam and spins a turbine right here. Make the water, the hot water make the this hot, um, this, these water boil, the steam in turn go and turn the turbine. Simple, right? Not exactly. Um, in paper, it does look pretty simple to me. We have the reactor core with the shenanigans happen, just some neutron hitting some particles, breaking off, and then hitting other neutrons, creating um, a huge amount of energy, which um, bur the, which warm, which heat the water, and then in turn go to the other sector, which creates steam, and then turns the turbine. It's simple, simple, but. Putting nuclear physics and and engin engineering into paper, it's easy. It's pretty easy. But doing it in real life, it's quite hard. More uh much harder than you'd think. And this process costs a lot of money. You see, when we think of nuclear, we, we have a bad bad blood to it because well, nuclear, no doubt, has killed people before, um, you know, by bombs and re uh, ra radiation. But nuclear nuclear power is one of the safest uh, one of the safest powers you can you can um, think of. Technologies of nuclear right now, it's almost impossible, almost, almost impossible that the chernobyl and the fukushima ha uh, will happen again it's because those those incidents are caused by um old technology and um unskilled personnel working there and stuff oh one fact i would like you to know about fukushima the um the reactor that exploded during fukushima Surprisingly, the people who got killed there um, were not being killed directly because of the blast, but um, got killed because 
of the stress of the evacuation process. Fun fact. Now, let's see. Some, some people argue that we should give up on old nuclear energy and focus only focus on renewables energy instead. Even though um, renewable energy will certainly be the future of electricity. Yes, that is no doubt. But renewable energy does have the downsides like consistency and reliability. The sun doesn't always shine. The wind doesn't always blow. The water does not always stay liquid. So um, if we are going to rely solely on renewables, we might have to build a gigantic energy storage system and release them whenever we need energy. Oh, I found a mistake here. Is needed um, the most, for example, at night when people need it the most. The opinion part uh, begins here. I have researched many, many sources, and I have decided that, you see, people always think each other as enemies when it comes to renewables and nuclear. People think that the renewables and nuclear against each other, right? But you see, after a lot of research, I've come to a conclusion that we should see each other as allies and work together. Thank you very much for listening to me. Very much. Now, these are the, um, the sources, the reference. Um, 